Hello YouTubies, this is King Scrab and thank you for watching this amazing, most bodacious and incredible YouTube video. So I want to expand on the psychopathology of topics on YouTube. Now there's been a number of really good videos about psychopaths on YouTube. Thomas Sheridan has made a fantastic array of most inspiring and bodacious videos on psychopaths to the point of he's just ripped the piss out of them and he's expanded on the issue and he's gone further than what Robert Hur did and really just investigated these fruitcakes to a T. So we understand a lot about them already but I think it's time to go on the cellular level of psychopathology and I think some of you guys might find this kind of interesting. Even the psychopaths out there might think, ah, you know, maybe I can learn something about myself and my condition in this video. So where am I going with this? Well, the psychopaths in prison is a controlled, a controlled place you know people get tested all the time they they tested them with the brain scans with blood tests and with urine samples etc and what they found was some very interesting characteristics as well as some physiological problems with the most violence of psychopaths you guys might find this interesting then so where am I going with this? Well, as you know, the psychopaths in prison are responsible for about 1% of all the violent crimes in society. <laughs> that sounds a bit strange saying that, but when you actually look around, you look at the politicians, the Queen and the royal family and them attacking other countries and destroying lives, you realise that you know, they're responsible for the other 99%. <laughs> and of course, the ones who are actually never caught or never charged, like Jimmy Savile, are obviously responsible for the other 99%, if you get what I mean. But let's go into the prison population, because this has been tested. These people have been tested. These psychopaths have been tested right down to the cellular level of their condition. Right into the brain scans that looked at almost everything. Now, there was a study... And with the blood test, it's a particular interesting study. They did something where they gave violent prisoners uh, vitamin tablets, uh, you know, pretty good ones actually, uh, to see the effect on them. And they didn't even tell them that they were adding nutrition to their diet. So they did it in secret. And what they found is that these prisoners who had uh, the better diets ended up being less violent. Now, ain't that interesting? It's not that they were being manipulative in that way. They just became less violent. It didn't mean that they be were less, you know, aggressive in passive sense. But they weren't, you know, so impulsive about it. Now, I find this study absolutely bizarre that it's never been discussed in the academic circles, except for the people who study brain chemistry and they... There was somebody who was a professor, and he was talking about blood sugar levels and hypoglycemia, and they found that all the violent criminals, all the violent psychopaths, and all the psychopaths in prison had hypoglycemia. And to the extent of which they had hypoglycemia was to the extent of how violent they were. So the worse it was on a cellular level, the more violent they were. Now, I find that very interesting. I mean, that... That it might be other reasons why that happens, but uh, hypoglycemia with low blood sugar level, if you, if you don't eat properly during the day, you will find that over time you will become more irritable. You will find the slightest insults a big distraction for you. I mean, you'll be really offended with it. Now, I can see over time how this would actually manipulate, manipulate a person's personality to do more wrong to be more aggressive and to create another persona to fight society. I mean, these people are lashing out, obviously, because that's why they're in prison. And that's why they care about hurting other people, because obviously they give a damn. You know, they're just being affected by their own pathology. But I don't, I don't understand how psychopaths themselves can actually not see through this anyway. You know, that you, you guys are being used. 
<laughs> that's, that's the amazing thing. The elites are literally using you guys to wipe down the population and they're doing it by controlling your brain chemistry, by making you into nutcases. Now, I find that hilarious, by the way, that these people actually fall for that sort of thing. And the hypoglycemia is really interesting because that glass eyed stir eyes they've got, you know, the most intense stir eyes, that is a condition that is relevant to hypoglycemia. So the mad eyes is a physiolo physiological condition based on the cellular level being interrupted. So the brain chemistry is interrupted and suddenly they, they've got this fixed stir because the eyes dry out and obviously they, they look like the soul, etc. So there is a good explanation for this and it makes sense and it's been tested. And it's been tested with the blood samples and with the urine samples. And they tested it with brain scans. And let me just explain something to you. You might find it of interest that the brain scans are also showing the sugar contents in brains, where the sugar is going. So that is interesting too. So when it's not going to certain parts of the brain, it means that brain part of the brain isn't being used. When the glucose is not actually going there, it means it's not being used. So what does the brain do when it's got limited low sugar levels and it needs to keep itself alive? What does it do? Well, just like anything else, you start cutting down the systems that you don't need. Uh, you don't need to fill the things for the people. You need to look after yourself. Well, let's close down that area of the brain. And, uh, you know, you need to make sure your heart beats, etc. So we'll just cut down the concentration area of the brain. And over time, what the, the brain will do is it'll close down those areas in favor of keeping the others alive. Because that's how it's got to work. It's got to survive. But by doing so, it makes it more likely that these people become pathological. So their behavior is affected. And this is clearly showing on prisoners, you know, the more hypoglycemia they are, the more violent they are. And when they give them extra nutrition, when they alter their diets, and when they cut down the sugar, uh, everything seems to turn out better. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the psychopaths in prison are suddenly cured. Uh, not really. What tends to happen is they become more manipulative in their behavior. But the impulse control is not as bad. It, the rate, the, um, the control system of impulsiveness is turned down, which is important. I think that needs to be turned down because it's stupid. You know, even the psychopaths out there who might be watching this video tell me, if your impulse control is really turned up and you're just acting out on the, the, the most silliest of insults and taking it personally and being butter about it, um, that means you're, be, you're pretty stupid, doesn't it, when you think about it? But if you're in, in, impulse control is turned down it means you can think more clearly you can be more pathological with your condition and uh, you know go about and try to groom little children like you do etc you know things like that so sorry I'm being a bit rude there but that's how these people actually think um, so what I would actually say is that because the hypoglycemia has been shown in these studies now I'm not 100% 100% sure that this is completely the whole story, but it seems to make sense. You know, if your if your blood sugar level is always low or rising and spiking, you do feel irritable, you do feel bad, and if this continues to happen all the time, eventually it's going to fuck with your head. You know, you go start acting out, and you're going to start being more psychopathic in your behaviour. Now, other people may say, well, what about the ones who were born that way? Okay. When the mother is pregnant and the baby's in utero and in the womb it's developing during a critical time of brain development and the mother becomes hypoglycemic and at the same time her defences between bacteria, fungus and viruses is lower because if you become hypoglycemic, your immune system becomes affected. And this, the, you know, the toxins stands, tend to start leaking into the baby, all right, that's developing. And what could actually happen is the brain of this developing child is suddenly altered forever. You know, it, it's a critical area. It's a critical, a critical point 
in the development of that child and suddenly the mother's hypoglycemic because she's eating a lot of crap because she's stuffing her face with McDonald's or, <laughs> or with you know beer or whatever and it affects the child forever so when that baby is born it's born without the ability to emphasize with other people and you know it doesn't matter what the diet's going to be like from that point on because the brain is already developed and it will never develop any well it will grow but it won't develop in that way because the critical point was when it was in utero with the mother and when that's affected it it's, it's past that stage of development so it's never going to use its empathy region of the brain again unless they find some way in science to actually activate it so this might explain why there's some psychopaths who you know don't have this pathological violence in the in their makeup they tend to be more outgoing and you don't recognize them as much and i don't even think that you can recognize it in their eyes with half of these people i think some of them are really good at disguising it and you can't tell uh, some people you can tell from the eyes but uh you know it's a physiological condition when you can tell it from the eyes it says it's hypoglycemia that's that's what i think I, I think some people you can tell, but I think there's more to it than that because there's some people with a lack of empathy who don't have the eye condition at all. And I think the natural psychopaths, a natural, I mean, it was developed in utero. And it might be that a virus took advantage of the hypoglycemia during the infant's development in the womb uh, because the immune system was lowered, allowing these these pathological um, beings to enter the mind of another creature so to speak so this is not something that's really experienced by other cultures so let me explain something else this might interest you, interest you as well in other cultures around the world the psychopath levels are extremely low in fact almost non-existent now some people might say well that's because they killed them at birth I don't think the mother is going to be particularly happy with, uh, you know, somebody, you know, throwing a kid uh, into a dog's den or something like that, or snapping a kid's neck. I think the mother would actually fight all the time if they're highly, you know, with empathy, you know, they've, they've got good empathy. I think most mothers, even from those cultures, would actually fight that, and indeed they do. Um, I think it's all down to the fact that they just don't develop in utero. The natural psychopaths don't develop that way. So they work as a team and they become more empathetic, empathetic with each other. Um, and because of this, because the, the sugar level is not really affected because their diets are completely different and they, they feel better and they look better, um, they, they don't have that condition in their, their society. So looking at it, I, I think there's something in this. I, I think it really should be investigated further because these cultures without psychopaths in the environment says a lot. So, you know, when when I'm seeing that and I'm seeing the diets being different and I'm seeing that none of them have hypoglycemia, it, it says something to me. Uh, and it also, it, I mean, hypoglycemia in all the prisons, all the prison. Uh, violent ones anyway <laughs> I'm trying to say here the hypoglycemia levels in the violent prisoners was very high uh, so that is important I think that should be investigated but here's the here's the problem guys here's the crux of the problem this is why you should really look at this why they put so much sugar in your food right if you put sugar a lot of sugar in people's food, they become more hyperactive as children, they become more aggressive as adults, as showing, and Neto, as Thomas Sheridan once said on his Facebook, seems to be breeding these proto-psychopaths. So, is it possible that what they're trying to do with our diets by putting all these sugars in them is to make us all more psychopathic to each other? And some people might say, well, no, 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 that's not possible. Well, then why is Kevin, people like Kevin Dutton then uh, promoting psychopaths as being sexy? 
and being uh, lovely and good looking and handsome and amazing and clever and high IQ and better looking and just brilliant all around. Uh, oh, and we can emphasize as well. We, we, we feel empathy for the people who just don't act on it. You know, it, it's like the saying that they're, they're, they're great at every, everything they do. I mean, from what he says there, I mean, even I want to do well on a psychopath test, you know, because that means I'm just brilliant, you know. So they are actually trying to make the psychopathic condition look more attractive. And yet they're putting all this sugar in our food, especially of the poor generations, the poor populations of countries like Ireland, America, etc. And, you know, places like America seems to be breeding all these proto-psychopaths. You know, it, it just seems to be out, completely out of bloody control when you look at it. So, you know, don't think that there's nothing that can be done about this. You know, you've been studied like lab rats, you know, to kill each other. And uh, other people might say, well, the politicians, you know, the sneaky and, uh, you know, they're not affected with this. Well, you know, when I'm looking at this, I can see politicians who are unhealthy, politicians who are massively overweight, and uh, even the real family who don't always look like they're getting the proper nutrition. Uh, it's interesting. The, the whole thing is interesting. I think it's, there's much more to this than meets the eye. And I think it's more than just psychopathy in the population of our world. I think there's mental illnesses all over the place. And this, patholo this dark pathological conditions of society is, uh, you know, it's casting a shadow all across the world where people just tend to screw each other over quite a lot, even if they're not psychopaths. They tend to be nasty and try to get one over on the other fellow human. And it seems to be that somebody out there, <laughs> you know, somebody there high up, uh, thinks that there's some type of uh, antichrist or something, you know, they're trying to show off and uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just I just find it all bizarre that, uh, you know, there is a way of stopping this in its tracks and that's to remove all the sugar in our diets, you know, removing all the bad shit in our diets and making our diets better. But will it happen? No, because they want you to kill each other. And uh, the more violent you are, the better. You know, all you have to do is just put a load of sugar in somebody's diet and you can make them more violent. You know, you, you, you can literally make somebody act like a complete lunatic. You know, make them take drugs, make them drink beer all day, fill their bodies with sugar and uh, turn them into a nutcase over time. And it will work, especially if they've had a bad time. Now, I saw an interesting radio show, I think with Kira Young or somebody like that. Uh, with Thomas Sheridan in, and we're talking about this uh, this mind parasite, which I thought was very interesting. Um, when you are having a very bad diet, all right, and uh, you also have a bad life, and uh, you start blaming other people for it, you know, you start having these low blood sugar levels, and you start feeling tense all the time and hating other people. This apathy you feel for the people starts to affect the mind. Now it's a consciousness more than a parasite. What it tends to do is over time it corrupts the mind, over time it damages the brain, and over time it makes people more violent, which is what happens in prisons. I mean 99% of those prison prisons uh, psychopaths are all proto-psychopaths. You know, there's very few pure psychopaths. Pure psychopaths don't, be, don't get put in prison. You know, they're more clever than that. They can uh, talk the way out of anything, basically. Um, anyway, I think that's enough. I've talked and rabbit on, rabbited on. Um, I've talked non-stop and waffled on a little bit here. It's not been scripted. It's just me talking in front of the camera. I thought it might be interesting to some people out there and I uh, hope to hear your opinions, too. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? Do you think if we control the diets of the Western population that psychopath conditions might be lower? Um, I don't think you'll completely take it out. I think there's more to it. I think there's more than one way of producing a psychopath. 
there's more than one way of doing it and I don't think sugar is the only way I think there's toxins in our diets too and perhaps there are some genetic conditions that produce similar behaviors so it's not there's always an explanation but it's never hundred percent right there's always more to it than that uh, but this might be one explanation and if it is an explanation and it does make sense and it is that what's causing it something should be done about it immediately especially in the alternate community they should be working on this because this is vital. If it is true that the prison population is affected with hypoglycemia, that should be warning bells to stop most of the sugar in our diets, to cut it out, especially aspartame and all the artificial flavors because they cause hypoglycemia as well. And there's somebody who made a really good video on YouTube. Uh, in the, he was a, he's a professor and he's also a brain surgeon. So he, he knows what he's talking about, and he made a fantastic thing about the hypoglycemia for behavior and nutritional deficiencies. I don't believe everything he says. I think some of them are a little bit wrong, but most of them are 100% right. You know, he, he's got some really good points. I'll leave the link down below, definitely. I mean, that was a really good video. Um, so, yeah, uh, waffled on a little bit. Quite a long video, but sometimes a good video, good long video is good. Anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye for now. And if you watched all this video, you managed to get through it, well done. I might, I might send you a cookie. All right. <laughs>